sunny morning, the furry demon shook the peaceful village. The attack took the lives of the chief's wife and the parents of Lago. Young and old were not, were all killed. Luckily, the chief's daughter, Rio, avoided the massacre. However, Lago's parents were killed by the demon. Because of the attack, Lago lost his parents and the connection with Rio, her friend. The villagers believed his parents led the demon to the village after the hunt. And so they blamed him and his parents for the destruction of the village. For years, Lago, Lagos has been seen as he, if he was a very demon of self. Lago, Lagos lived carrying this burden alone, shunned, stared at, and avoided like the black plague. Now he lives in the outer part of the village, alone, not so far and not too close to the village. He loved it very much. 16 years later, after the village had been rebuilt and peace has been established, the chief made an announcement. On a cold and rainy day, he stood tall next to his daughter. With his sturdy voice, he said, bring me a pair of slippers made from the demon's fur. And the man who brings me the fur, the fur slippers will marry my daughter. And the whole crowd, not even knowing the princess, the princess of Lagos, he was there with his brown robe, listening and planning. Lagos knew that he, if he slayed the demon, the people of the village would finally acknowledge him, and he could finally marry Rio, and he could come back to the village and live a peaceful life. Nobody else dared to slay the beast that lived in the hidden forest. However, Lagos was, was determined to win the love of Rio, the villagers, and avenge the death of his parents. The following morning, he stepped out of his teepee before the sun could fill the sky with yellow heat. He packed food, extra clothes, and a spear. He stepped out, and, the, and, a, and a soft wind tickled his face, and he quickly walked until he stood. He stood in front of the wood line, and then again, the wind blew on his face. He proceeded into the forest. After his first steps into the forest, he came face to face, face came, he came face to face, face with a wolf. He glared into Lago's soul, intending to kill him. Lagos gripped his spear firmly, ready to attack. When behind the wood, wood swallowed three pups, whimpering. Lagos remembered he had food in his bag, so as the wolf glared at him, shaking, Lagos left all the food, food he had packed with, with him and left it for the wolves and its pups. The wolf quickly backed down and accepted his gift. And he, did, and he looked back and smiled. He continued into the hidden forest. When the sun, when the sun was at, at, at its highest point, his stomach began to whimper loudly. This reminded him of, of the hungry pups. Lago reminisces his decision of sharing his food, but instead of pondering his decision further, he began scattering sheep, scavenging for berries in the bushes. His eyes then noticed a moose that lay motionless on the ground. His eyes targeted, and he crept towards it, slowly, step by step. When he got there, he knelt down, and he grabbed his spear, ready to stab the moose in the heart as it slept peacefully. He raised his spear, blocking the sun's rays, and before he had the chance to stab it in the chest with that final blow, the moose piercing his eyes gazed into, into his lago's eyes. He knew he had made a connection. The moose spoke to, him, spoke to him, and he spoke to it back. Mind to mind, they both understood that, the, that those who strike from behind 
I'm not our not true hunter. I just reach into his bag for an next for his extra warm clothes. We cover the moose as they continue to slumber, and thus Lagos ventured on his quest in a search of the demon. Then the forest darkened and a mist and a mist began to brew. The smell of death lingered through the air, and an ominous wind wrestled his face as a warning, telling him to turn back. Lagos stood his ground as he began to see his silhouette began to form in the mist. And its glowing and <clears throat> its glowing red eyes bored through Lagos Lagos' soul. The beast roared loudly. What are you doing here? Lagos responded. Then Lagos responded. I came here to slay you, but I don't want to slay you. The demon puzzled and responded, why? It was I who killed your parents and left you an orphan. An orphan to be shunned and hated by the villagers, Lagos said. Then Lagos said, life is more precious. Vengeance only consumes your heart. You forget that you can passion it. Too passionate, and you also forget to share with others. But most of all, you forget what is most important to appreciate life and those who are still with us. I stand here to ask you if I could shave your fur in a, tra in, in a trade for the clothes on my back. The demon looked at him, and his eyes turned blue instead of red. For the thought, for, for following his kind heart, hearted ideals, the demon granted his request. Lago sent skin a fraction of his demon of the demon spirit and made fur slippers for the chief's daughter. He continued back home. As he walked, he saw the village on the horizon, and the villagers noticed him, and they couldn't believe it, it was Lagos, and he and they could see the fur slippers, and the chief pierced through the through the crowd and his daughter, all shocked and awed. The chief bowed down to him and said, thank you. And Rio and Lagos, who were once childhood friends before the attack, were buried and lived happily ever after. Oh.